everybody. Welcome back to Speedway Motors. My name's Tim. I'm one of the techs here. I always love it when you can stop by the shop and we can talk about some of the great products that we have available to you. Something that might help you out on your project. Now this video actually came into being because not long ago I talked about steel 32 Ford grill shells. If you can't find an original, which they're getting tougher to find. I talked about some of the different options that we have for steel grill shells. I'm building a 29 Roadster and I put one of our steel Speedway grill shells on my car but in the video I talked a little bit about the radiator that I used. Since that time a lot of you have written in and said, hey Tim, tell me more about the radiator that you used on your hot rod. Maybe it'll help me out and I'm happy to do it and that's what this video is all about. When it comes to radiators for 32 Fords, there are a lot of options out there and there's some great companies making radiators. Walker's right on the top of my list but you also have Griffin too but I wanted to focus on the Speedway radiators today and the reason is is because if you're like me and you're on a budget you're probably looking to see where you can save money because obviously building a car is expensive. I've got two kids at home there in swimming lessons, dance lessons and, and that all costs money so anytime I can save a little bit you know I'm, I'm going to do it. So that's where the Speedway radiator comes into play. This is a great radiator and the reason I know that is because customers that buy these, they just love them. They never call me back. They say, Tim, that radiator worked great and that's why I had no qualms about using it on my little Roadster. Uh, what I ended up having to do is uh, make some adjustments to it that I'll talk about in a second, but chances are if you're running a small block Chevy, these things are actually set up with necks uh, to work with a small block. They've got a centralized upper neck, but then they have a, a passenger side lower neck. Uh, and I can talk about what I had to do to make it work with my hand just in case you're like me and you have a car other than a small block Chevy and it might help you out. But first, I want to talk about the different options you have if you're buying one of these radiators from us. You see three radiators behind me. The first one is the one I use. This is actually a stock height radiator and this is a gem. I just love this radiator. I'll talk more about the specifics in a second, but I also have, this is actually 27 inch, I also have a 21 and a half or a 21 and a 22 and a half uh, radiator. So this one's 21 inches and that's right to the top of the tank and then also a 22 and a half. The only one that has the stock style neck is actually the stock height 27 inch. The other ones do not have the neck, uh, just to make a note of that. They're all set up the same way, small block Chevy, uh, lower neck. They all have tranny coolers in them. They all have a one half inch NPT port for the cooling sensor, so you're good there. Uh, they also have a pit cock to drain them out, no issues there. Um, they are a great radiator. Two rows, they're all TIG welded, uh, actually a stamp steel tank on these, so uh, they work wonderfully. Uh, really well put together. When I first got mine home, the first order of business was making it work with my grill shell. I had a steel uh, grill shell from here at Speedway. And it was really simple. You know, I just had to uh, locate the holes in these tabs. The aluminum tabs are all provided for you. And just drill these in the right place. Everything bolts up fine. I didn't have to do a whole heck of a lot to it. The lower tabs, uh, the same way, you find your holes in your cross member. I'm using a little Model A cross member in, my, in, my, in the kind of centralized my 32 frame rails. Drill your hole there and you're good to go. We've got all the mounting kits and everything you need. If you, uh, if you need bolts to mount that up, no problem. We can fix you up. I can talk a little bit about some of the modifications I had to make to my radiator. I'm running a 241 Red Ram Hemi, little baby Hemi in my car. So uh, if you're using the stock pump like I am, uh, it actually uh, requires a neck on the other side. So I had to switch things around a little bit. Luckily, I have a good friend that loves TIG welding aluminum. He, he can't get enough of it. I was able to hack the, the lower uh, neck off of my radiator, make a nice little patch there, and then put it on the other side. I also moved my pitcock to the other side and sealed up my tranny cooler holes because, of course, I'm running a manual transmission, so I didn't have to mess with that. Seems like a lot of work, but holy cow, it really wasn't bad at all. The nice thing is, is Speedway Motors, uh, we have a little piece on the shelf that comes in really handy. It's a little water neck kit and you can see the part number for that uh, right here on the video. We can uh, put a clickable link for you if this would interest you. But uh, you get two new necks, you get a new pit cock which I used. I had that welded in. It's got the bung and everything and then a little extra nipple here too if you need a new nipple for the top. But this kit really came in handy and for a song and a dance I was able to switch my my port on the bottom no problem and my radiator's all ready to go. The other thing I like about this radiator if you want to get into manipulating and of course a lot of guys don't they want to just bolt this thing in and go but on my little roadster I wanted to run a stock height radiator 
but I needed it to be lower just a little bit in the car because it, it just to make the hood nice and level, make everything work. So what I was able to do is I took these aluminum uh, mounting tabs and I was able to cut these and lower them without taking them completely off the tank and then re-welding them. And I got a good inch uh, lower radiator. It still fit nicely in my Model A cross member. It was wonderful. So if you have to do that, that's an option. A lot of guys ask me that. They say, hey Tim, I want to run this with a Model A Roadster body, but I don't know if I can fit a stock height 27 inch radiator in my car. And that's one way of doing it. You can lower those tabs just a little bit to get you the clearance. You could also go you know, to the 22 and a half inch radiator, but the kicker there is you, you lose a little bit of your core. It'll still cool the car pretty well if everything else is, is as it should be. But I like sticking with the stock style. It fills up my, my uh, grill shell nicely and, and it just looks right. Of course, I've painted mine flat black to kind of blend it all in and all that good stuff. But really nice radiator. Again, we've got them in the 27 inch, 22 and a half, and 21 inch. The neck's perfect. I put it up right on my grill shell and my radiator cap spun right in there. Of course it's a dummy neck, it doesn't do anything, but it fit right, it's welded right in the right place. So it's got all the provisions for your strut rods and everything else you'd need. So hope that helps you out everybody. Hope I didn't talk your ear off about radiators, but I get excited about this stuff, especially doing the hot rod stuff where you're changing stuff around and manipulate it, re-welding stuff, but you wouldn't have to do that. If you're running a small block Chevy, obviously this thing's going to drop right in and give you years of good service and, and no issues. So give me a holler if you have any other questions. Subscribe to our YouTube page. Write me questions right here on Facebook or YouTube. Always happy to get back to you. Talking about hot rod parts is my forte. I just love it. And I love you folks too, calling in with your questions. Always happy to get another hot rod out on the road or at least help you do it. So thanks again for stopping by here at Speedway Motors. We'll see you again next time, everybody.